friends my name is prem asim jain and uh, we are going to learn mongodb sharding in this uh, lecture so we might have read a lot of theory about uh, how mongodb sharding works and everything but today uh, we are going to see it implemented by hands on so feel free to pause the video try out the commands and uh, try it uh, that will make you a better learner for this concept so uh, just to help you out i have shared all the commands in my blog so if you will go to my website which is premasim.com and there is a search bar if you will uh, write uh, mongodb sharding uh, you will probably end up with this uh, lecture uh, the blog which i have published on valentines day last year 14th of february so uh, this script is uh, essentially it would work on any linux box or uh, probably it would also work on windows i tried it on mac so you might have to figure out the equivalent commands so without wasting much time let's try and uh, start our replica set so on high level uh, we are going to create three replica set and then we are going to create a shard uh, which means uh, there would be a mongo as process which will take care of all these shards and then and everything is running on uh, all shards are running of course they have to run on different ports and then we will enable the sharding on the key student id so sharding key is the key on the basis of which data is divided and stored on different shards so first thing first the, the very first thing is we'll kill all the existing mongod or mong processes whatever is running and remove all the irrelevant data once that is done then we will start uh, uh, making our first uh, replica set which is called as shard 0 up and running and working so let's go ahead and do that so our first uh, server is up and uh, we did mongod replica set is as zero we have given the log file and the path so this uh, db path is uh, important to understand please make sure that uh, wherever you want your binary converted data to be saved that uh, uh, directory is given over here if you will uh, give common directory in two different processes it would fail or it might corrupt itself so they have to be unique so that they can write to that path and then your port and uh, this is a fork means you can uh, run the one command and can use same terminal to uh, continue with your another command so it would not hold held up the terminal this hyphen hyphen fork so we have uh, we have started the first server then uh, we have got the second process child process field existed with code uh, sudo yeah so there was uh, seems to be the permission issue so we might have to do a super user login or super user permission to run this so we'll do a sudo and this will solve our problem so this time this is successful now we'll do the same thing for our third uh, third node in our replica set so we will do sudo so all these three servers are running but still if i do mongo it would fail because they are running on some different ports so we will try to uh, catch up with the same port whatever we have run 37017 so we will say mongo hyphen hyphen port Three seven four one seven. So this has uh, came up basically. Uh, this because the configuration was there before, so it invoked itself. However, we can still uh, pass a config object. So what we are going to do here is now connect to one server and uh, initiate the set config as zero replica set. 
so we created this uh, sorry we uh, just invoked this uh, server uh, shell with the shell we connected to the server which is running on 37017 and uh, now we have to instantiate this config object once the config object is there we might have to initialize the config which we did already so it says it's already initialized then start a replica set so this thing now we have to start another replica set so this uh, will follow the same steps it would be repeated so we'll just do it faster because it's just the repetition so i have to first remove these directories if they exist there for shard 1 before in any case so we do not want any data inconsistency so they have been removed now one by one we will uh, repeat this same process so this has been poked this server is running on 47017 now we will do same for this guy which is second node in this replica set it spun up successfully just make sure if you are trying it on cloud on any lightweight server uh, and if it doesn't support uh, much load it might hang so you have to have sufficient ram because these uh, this is very ram ram intensive basically these processes because they keep running on ram so we will exit uh, the first replica set uh, what we connected and now we will connect to the another mongo shell which is running on 47017 so once we go there you don't see primary here because it was not initialized or configured before i'll do it now the first example what i took had a previous configuration in its mind or in its journal basically so as soon as we started it was able to get the primary then and there itself before so let's try to do exit first then try to connect it so now if we start now it starts with the primary so first guy has become primary if we try to connect to another uh, mongo database server or instance in the same replica set that would tell us that it's a secondary so i can just real quickly do that so in this we have uh, on 418 we have another ser uh, service which is running so this time we'll try to connect that and it should say a secondary so our replica set for chart 2 is working fine as well so we'll do a exit now i'll just uh, make it smaller so in the center it would look good and i'll also increase some font size okay so now let's go and uh, invoke our third replica set so as before we'll just create the appropriate directories so mkdir or in windows it would be md minus p will create the directory if they do not exist so we have to give sudo in uh, since it's a mac system Uh, which is essentially nothing but uh, linux play some kind of linux uh, kernel uh, so it need some permission in the so we will now instantiate another mongo d process for our replica set s2 on port 57017 so this is successful again now we will go for another nothing is changed here it's just the port and uh, the uh, db path number and then uh, the log file whatever the log path the rest everything remains same 
so these uh, information whatever i just mentioned has to be unique if you are uh, missing mistyping it or doing anything it would fail to run or it would be inconsistent basically so why this failed is uh, it didn't had permission to begin with or to start we'll just give it proper permission and we'll validate that our third server uh, replica set is working fine so we'll just try to connect at the 57018 sorry so what we did is we have just uh, created our uh, instances but we have not configured it yet so we can configure it from uh, any of the servers that is fine so we'll connect and it's just a normal mongo console so we have to uh, you know tell it uh, that how many host what would be so this imagine this is a cluster and cluster has members so we have to provide the information to the cluster about the members that uh, cluster uh, shard is s2 replica set it has following members which has following id and the uh, port number and so imagine uh, in real time instead of local host these would be the different ip addresses of different servers so now let's initialize it exit it and then validate that it's working fine so we will do exit now we will reconnect and it uh, this time it became secondary so another guy would be primary so they can randomly uh, any guy can become uh, primary there is no hard and fast or preset rule that who will become primary or who will become secondary out of all these in the nodes so uh, now our next step would be to configure our uh, mongo s basically uh, which will uh, do the configuration config management so for that we have to create uh, three different uh, directories which will hold the config values we have that in place now we will uh, start uh, one by one we will uh, start configuring or uh, invoking these processes uh, which would essentially be the config server processes so previously we uh, nine processes were uh, invoked and they were uh, invoked for the database part this uh, what we are uh, you know invoking now that would be for the config so this guy will understand which shard key will go where and all that kind of managerial overhead would be taken care by this so uh, this is again a replica set the reason is if uh, one mongo um, uh, config server dies down then there are his partners or their partners who will take over uh, to that now start the mongo s on standard port so after the mongo config servers are there we will start the main uh, service mongo service which will uh, talk to each so you can think of it as a application driver which is taking care of all the different uh, um, all the different config servers this would be their master and these are its kind of slaves or something so it might take some time so we will just invoke it and then we will just wait till the time we get uh, the notification failed or passed so we are successful over here as well because it has rain automatically now uh, we have to go to the standard mongo prompt and from the standard mongo prompt we have to do some of the admin work so let's do a exit over here and then we will just do a mongo so this mongo at default connects to mongoose and mongo s uh, connects to uh, three different uh, mongo config servers and each mongo config servers talks to its own replica set so we are a big blown cluster on my laptop 
there are several servers inside it running and we have uh, we are able to simulate them all successfully so now let's do some admin stuff for admin stuff the command is the db dot admin command in whatever command you pass so we are saying add shard as zero on so and so forth so the shard has been added so first shard has been added so imagine that uh, uh, whatever number of shard or uh, you know whatever your shard algorithm or activity based on that you can uh, add that number of shards so we will just add all these three shards so everything has been added now we will enable sharding so that's how we will enable sharding now inside this uh, sharding we will uh, uh, in this database we will uh, give it the key that key would be student id right now let's say use so show connections we have students already it might not have any data for now which we already suspected so now we will insert so whatever we have for student id i can make the student id as 420 and then i will give the name of the student as sc this would be our first data so first data might have gone to one of the uh, shard server which uh, the manager would take care but uh, as soon as we want to retrieve it it would get it from there so that's how it divides uh, all the data we'll give uh, another uh, data here and then we will insert one more let's try to do this okay so whatever data has been inserted it is now getting sharded and it is getting divided among whatever number of processes we have internally uh, configured so in this uh, session or video we learnt to uh, make the sharding process really work runtime and we have configured it all by ourselves so i encourage you to follow this video you can pause you can take comments from the blog and just try to run it and uh, just experience uh, how sharding basically works in real time on your own box so i hope this uh, session was uh, good and it was knowledge uh, it was knowledgeable enough to motivate you to try it out and if you have any questions just uh, mail me at prem.webmaster at gmail.com thank you